Oh, there we go. Wonderful. Set this light. Oh. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I want to talk very briefly about a model. You'll see it in their Millionaire Real Estate Agent book. It's a triangle and it said leads, listings, and leverage, okay? Listings, obviously, that's when you've got a sign in the yard, you're selling a home. Leverage is a system or a tool that helps you um, do your business better. But the number one thing, the thing that everyone needs, I don't care if you're a doctor, a lawyer, or a realtor, you need leads. You need new business. So I want to draw a distinction between two things a contact and a lead. A contact is where you have someone's name and their information, their phone number, their email address, um, their physical address, those kind of, that's a contact. You can go buy contact lists and they don't do you any good. A lead is someone who you have their contact information, but they've raised their hand in some way, okay? So how do you think people raise their hands and say in the market, I want to do business. I want to buy a home or I want to sell a home. How would they go about raising their hand so you're aware that they are interested in doing that? Go through an open house. They go through an open house. They're raising their hand. So I want you to think, are they raising their hand? Because if they're raising their hand, they're potentially a lead. So they go through an open house. What's another way they might raise their hand? Yeah, they ask you questions about real estate. Okay. So they may, you may bump into someone that an old work friend or you're at a barbecue and they say, oh yeah, you know, da, 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 da. I'm thinking of making a move because, you know, we've, my kids are moving out and I don't need this huge house. Or we just had our third kid and like, we're in a two bedroom apartment. It's so stressful, you know, they're raising their hand. Okay. What other ways that people raise their hand? Yeah, they reply to social media, you know, they or, you know, they comment like uh, something on your on a, an Instagram or a Facebook post. Yeah. OK. So some of the other ways people is you've got a website, maybe they'll come visit that website um, and fill out a form. If you've put out some kind of offer online, those kinds of things. So you so said there's a difference between a contact and a lead. Now I want to draw a distinction between two other things. There's something called prospecting and something called marketing. So I want to, this is something that's not as intuitive. Prospecting, marketing is what you would think it is. You put a billboard up and it says, I sell homes, you know, or, you know, Ella is Utah County's best realtor and call me, you know, there's an offer there, call me, or curious what your home's worth. That's a very passive thing or you send them a postcard in the mail. They have to do something to raise their hand, okay? <clears throat> you send postcards to a thousand neighborhoods, we call that farming. I mean, thousand homes in a neighborhood um, for 12 months straight, every month. That's called farming. Is that okay? Yeah, that's marketing. That is not prospecting. That's marketing. Prospecting is where you proactively reach out to people in an effort to generate business. So prospecting doesn't cost a lot of money. It's usually lower cost, but it's a higher time commitment. Marketing is more expensive and is a lower time commitment. So those are kind of the two distinctions there. Both can generate leads, okay? But there is a diagram here. I think they've got the funnel in here somewhere. And I'll come back to this stuff. I just want to show you this funnel. Oh, there it is. See, lead capture, database, leads, and contacts. Um, 
prospecting, the leads are more ready to do business right away, usually. Whereas marketing, they're further away from being able to do business. Okay. So if you're going to lead generate, my recommendation would be if you're new to spend time prospecting. Daniel, I know, has been doing open houses pretty religiously. He's got one under contract from that process. Okay. Um, Gary Keller made the statement. He said, my fear of failure was greater than my fear of lead generating. Let's talk about that. What are some of your fears? And just be totally honest with me here because we all have these fears. When it comes to if I said, hey, make 10 phone calls to your database, to your SOI, what comes up? And also something that, that's come up with me earlier as we talk is making sure that we're genuine. Okay. So I know that's something that uh, I myself work on. And I, just because I, I tell my, I definitely like to talk to people. I've always wanted to talk to people. I just never had time. Yeah. And it comes up naturally. You know, I'm working on that. Like, hey, what do you do? What are you doing for work? How's your work going? Yeah. I'm going to ask it back to you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, any, any advice on that? On yeah. Okay. So keeping it genuine. So what's the fear? You don't want to appear disingenuous or, or like fake or maybe the word is salesy. Okay. So you want to appear genuine. What else? Okay. I have a question. Yeah. What if you know them in one business form and you cross that business? Okay. Line? So like, can you cross yeah. that line into another? So business? we talk about sphere of influence, yeah. meaning they're in my sphere, right? Yeah. But they're little subspheres. I know someone because I was their college roommate. I know someone because I went to church with them. I know someone because I went to college with them. I know someone because I went to high school with them. Or what is the, what's the other business? Well, I, okay, well, I actually have been a hairstylist for 20 okay. years. Okay, I've got yeah, that. That's, that's a, fine. Yeah. Uh, I can't do one job. But I'm actually a travel agent also. Okay. So I know that. So you've got as, in these different that's categories. What I'm yeah. Concerned about. Yeah. When I, when I cross that line, yeah. I do a little like, hey, yeah. would you mind if? Yeah. Is that yeah. Yeah. So good the, or bad? Yeah. I, I don't think it's good or bad. I think it's all about how you do it. And that's I th fun. yeah. And we'll talk about that. I think that's worth discussing because how do you have that conversation and not mess this up, but keep, you see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. That's what I'm worried about. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think the genuine things are really important. Um, here's some myths that I think are worth exploring that I think lead generation is really difficult. Okay. People think it's difficult. Uh, difficult can mean time consuming. It could mean I don't have the skills yet. I don't have time to lead generate. I don't know what to say. I'm afraid of making mistakes. Okay. You could say this about almost anything. Parenting, going to college, being in a relationship. I don't have time. I don't know what to say. What if I make a mistake? You know. These things apply to a lot of areas of our life. So um, this is something here. I think lead generation is difficult. I was confusing enjoy effort with enjoyment. Lead generation is actually easy. It just requires effort. Um, it does require effort. And I would say that sometimes it feels harder if it's unnatural. If we're doing a lead generation activity that is out of alignment with what we feel is best or what we like to do. So my conversation yesterday when I taught this class was there's thousands of ways to lead generate, maybe hundreds, not thousands. Um, find the ones that you feel in alignment with and do those. Okay. And so we can have that conversation today. What do I feel in alignment with? Um, and maybe you have some myth understandings like it's stories you're telling yourself around lead generation that are inaccurate. So I think it's really important for us to be self-aware and say, okay, what is the story I'm telling myself and how do I unwind that story and reframe it? Okay. So what do you think some of the stories you're telling yourself a lot around lead generation might be? Uh, okay. I don't want to sound like a network marketer. I don't want to sound like someone selling Amway. Yeah. 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 I want something from them. Like all of a sudden, I haven't talked to them in years. And now all of a sudden, I'm and calling. Yeah. What? 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. I like that. It scares the daylights out of me. Yeah. So when I started in real estate in 2002, three, my broker at the time, different company, he subsequently retired. Um, he, he said to me, oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. And he was going to give me this incredible split. So I was like, oh, this is awesome. He's like, come work for me. I'd never done real estate. I graduated with a degree from BYU in neuroscience. My wife was finishing up an English degree. And I was like, well, I'll just go get a real estate license for a year before I go to med school. Anyway, so he's like, yeah, come work for me, you know? And uh, I was like, okay. And I was like, well, how do I get business? He's like, well, you're going to go to this two-day seminar down in Southern California, uh, well, like Central California, and um, wherever Monterey is, I guess that's technically Northern California. Monterey, it's called the Brian Buffini Turning Point Retreat. They're going to teach you everything you need to know. So he didn't provide any training, none. There was no Ignite. There was no win with sellers, win with buyers. None of this like existed in his brokerage. So I was broke because I was a college student. And I, was, uh, I went and stayed with my in-laws that lived in the Bay Area. And I would drive down the hour and a half every day and then drive back to attend this turning point retreat, which cost an arm and a leg, which at the time was $300. I felt like that was more money than I knew what to do. I, I put it on a credit card is what I did. Went to the Turning Point Retreat. And his whole shtick, Brian Buffini's shtick, was building a business based on referrals. And I was like, but I don't know. I don't have past clients. How am I going to get referrals? Anyway, he taught this methodology. And guess what? To this day, I still use those things. Like everything I learned there. And that was the only training I got was that two-day Turning Point Retreat. We, like you, you, you're there in class eight hours a day. It's really entertaining. There's a lot of hype, and I'm not into hype. That's not my style. But uh, the principles I learned continue to rear their heads for the last 20 years, and that's how I've built my business. And it was. It was awkward at first. It was a little hard, um, but I persisted, and I found my style, my way of doing it, and that has really, really set me up for success. So. Um, yeah, I, I want you guys to tell yourselves that you can do this. So I want you to write the sentence down. And when you get home, I want you to put it on a post-it note. And I want you to put it on your mirror where you brush your teeth or put your contacts in or, you know, do your makeup, whatever, whatever you like, wherever you spend a few minutes every morning. I want you to put this on a post-it note. It's a question. So this question is an affirmation. And I know you're like dying to hear it because I haven't shared it with you yet. There's like such a buildup. Um, this question is an affirmation. And what it does to you neuro neurolinguistically is it forces you to look for what it implies. Okay. And it actually shifts your consciousness. And it's going, and I did not buy this stuff. I don't, I'm, affirmations, I'm like, whatever, this is so lame. Manifesting, please give me a break. Like, this is not my style. But I have a team member that did this and her income doubled every year for three years doing this. Okay. Why does everything always work out for me? Why does everything always work out for me? Put that on a post-it note. Put it on your mirror. When you ask your brain a question or your heart a question, however you want to put this, it starts to look for the answer. And you will start to see things working out for you. Why does everything always work out for me? That's a powerful everything always, really? Yeah. Why does everything always work out for me? I want you to put that on a post it note, put it up there. If that's the only thing you take away from this class, it was a win. Um, so he said, I don't have time to lead generate. I had an issue with making time to lead generate. So the traditional wisdom, I'm going to just tell you up front, every class you take, they're going to say, Time block three hours every day from nine to noon or from eight to 11. And you're going to lead generate during those three hours. Do you want to know how many realtors in this office do that? A big fat zero, none of them. And if they tell you they do, they're lying because they just don't do it. Okay. I would eventually guess that some do it two hours a day. Okay. They lead generate two hours a day. Um, and if you see, so if you look at the masters of real estate, the people have been really successful. There was a period in their career where maybe they were doing it three hours a day, okay? 
more likely two hours, okay? Um, and they all put their own spin on it, okay? So I don't want you to feel like I'm a failure if I'm not doing it three hours a day. That is the ideal. That is what we strive for. But the reality is that isn't what always happens, okay? Now, like I said, lead generating can look differently for different people. Um, I don't know what to say. You have to master the dialogues. And that is something that is a little counterintuitive. You guys want to sound genuine? You want to not sound salesy? Master the dialogues. People say, oh, no, a script will make me sound fake. A script will make me sound salesy. You cannot personalize until you memorize. Okay? Memorize a handful of scripts. Just a handful. Memorize them. Like literally like old school, put it on a post-it note, whatever you have to memorize them. And then forget about them. And what you'll find is you're able to adjust that script for the situation you're in. It'll just come up. You know, you can't draw on an empty well. So what you're doing by memorizing is you're filling that well. Now you're in a situation. So let me give you an example. There's something called the Ford Dialogue. Ford is family, occupation, recreation, dreams. I'm at an activity with my kids' parents, and we're talking, and it just comes naturally. How are the kids? Oh, they're doing great. Awesome. And it's like a dialogue. They're asking me. We're talking. Like, oh, my gosh. I can't believe they're quickly. Our kids are growing up. I've got three that are adults now and three that are still at home. You know, blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, yeah, how's work? You know, oh, yeah. Remind me, like, didn't you get a job transfer, like, a, a, a promotion six months ago? Actually, that was a year ago. Oh, my gosh, time flies. Well, how's the real estate market? Oh, well, actually, it's kind of crazy. It's shifted because two years ago, it was multiple offers on everything. And now it's a more steady pace, and I'm loving it. But I'm never too busy to help someone you might need to send my way. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. I have no problem doing that. Like, hey, do you guys want to go get something to eat at the concession stand? You know, it just kind of works into the conversation. But I've done it a thousand times, right? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to practice with a partner. I want you to practice in the mirror. I want you to listen to it and master it. Because you don't want to practice on your friends. That's when you screw it up. That's when it sounds salesy, right? So um, you've got to master those dialogues. And you've got to make peace with the boredom of mastery. Mastering something can be kind of boring, right? You got to make bill. Those guys that are making a million bucks that you see on the stage, blah, blah, blah. Those guys have made peace with the boredom of mastering it. You know, I'm afraid of making mistakes. Well, you know what? That's called being human. We all make mistakes. And that is the fastest way to success. You know, they say fail fast, fail forward. So make lots of mistakes. And guess what? You'll learn something from every one. It's the people who never take action who are afraid of making mistakes that never progress, you know? So my daughter is in her early 20s. She's dating. And I said to her, I would rather have you kiss 100 boys once than one boy 100 times. It's the same thing. It's like you don't know what you want in a future spouse, potentially, unless you date a bunch of different people. Like, don't catch feelings fast and, like, invest a ton of time with one person. Go on a, a couple dates, you know, and then go on a couple dates. Let's, don't make it this big, like the one is not going to show up until, you know, gotta, well, that's the expression, you got to kiss a thousand frogs before you find Prince Charming. Anyway, uh, it's the same thing with lead generation. This shows your sphere of influence, okay? So there's some frogs here. There's some Prince Charmings. In our analogy, uh, the Prince Charming is the person who's going to actually buy or sell a home, Okay. Do not kiss your leads, your prospects. That was just an analogy. Um, how many Facebook friends do you have? More or less, ballpark. 700. This isn't a competition. I'm just trying to get an idea. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Daniel, do you know how many? A few hundred? 350? 600? 500? Okay. And maybe half of them live locally? I, do I even know them? Yeah, exactly. Like, like I have, I have these. I was looking through my Facebook yesterday, and I'm like, who is this person? I have never met them in real life, you know. And it's like people will send you a Facebook friend request, and you know, you're like, oh, I think I know them from. I guess I should add them. I don't want them to be offended, you know. And now I'm 
yeah i mean if they're like yeah you get the ones who are just like oh, i know this is weird but anyway but uh like especially if you've got 12 friends in common like man i think i've met them but i meet a lot of people so you know anyway long story short um I, the reason I ask is that's one potential database is just social media. Who's not really on Facebook? They're more on Instagram. Okay. So, yeah. So that's another potential database. So here's a little thing. I'm going to talk about this SOI income opportunity in just a second, but I want you to think as we approach the end of the year, there are people that you want to connect with, but you don't want to make it weird. Okay. Um, what can I do to connect with these people and not make it weird? Send them a private message on Facebook or on Instagram and say, hey, it's been way too long. I'm sending out Christmas cards and I don't even have your address. Would you mind sending me your address? Is anyone offended by receiving a Christmas card? Is that weird to send out a Christmas card at Christmas time? No. Okay. So I think that's an adult thing to do. And I think it's a great way to reconnect with someone. They're going to send you their address. If they don't send you your address, they don't go in your database. You know, if they send you your, their address, you're like, thanks so much, man. We really need to reconnect some time. Do you want to go out for, I nearly said a drink, a coffee, a meal. I don't want to make it expensive to you. You know, we really need to, like the context in which you know them will dictate how you reconnect. But now you can reestablish that relationship. Does that seem less awkward? So that's the gift that the last quarter of the year is giving you. Okay. That's a little tidbit of information. So let's say you've got 200. This is uses contacts in your phone as an example. What you want to do is you want to build, sort, and qualify your database. So how many of you feel like you've built a database? Put it in command. Okay. So, okay. So it needs to be built and it needs to be somewhere where it's easy accessible. Command is a brilliant place to put it. A spreadsheet is okay. Some electronic format that's really uh, accessible, you know, where you can go look up the name, the phone number, the address. Um, so once it's there, you need to sort it. And by sort it, I want you to rank the quality of the relationship, okay? So if this was my kid, that's an A, right? An A plus, hopefully. So if it's an old uh, friend of mine that I've spoken to two weeks ago, that might be an A. Okay, so I want you to rank it A, B, and C. A, they know me, they trust me. We talk at least once or twice a year. B, man, I haven't spoken to this person in a while, but they know me and trust me. It'll be a little weird, but maybe this, this uh, Christmas card thing's a great way to reconnect. C, they know me. They might trust me. There's never really been a question of should they or shouldn't they because they're just someone I, they're more of an acquaintance and I don't really have a very deep connection with them. And D is they're a freaking weirdo. I should just delete them, you know? So go about it. Go ahead and do that. Um, so build have it in a specific place, sort it, and now you're going to qualify it. And this is the hard part. This is the dialogue, that kind of thing. Before we talk about qualifying it, though, I want you to look at the potential income opportunity. If you have 250 potential contacts in your phone, let's say they're A's and B's, okay? A's and B's. Now, I'm not talking about the C's. Maybe they're half A's, half B's. The potential closing opportunities from those are basically 20 people because people move on average every eight years. So according to NRA stat, NAR stats, it's about 250 people, 20 of them are going to make a move in a year, assuming 60% of them are homeowners, 40% of them are not. Okay. The, uh, the potential referrals are 25. So about 10% of them will give you a referral in any 12-month period if consistently connected with, okay? So that's 45 potential transactions from a database of 250 people. If your average commission's five grand, if it's five grand, which is kind of low, that means your income opportunity is $225,000. 
Okay. So if you've got, yeah. So if the so if on on an average commission you're getting five grand, like obviously that number is quite variable because, like, if it's a more expensive home, it's going to be substantially higher. That's a super low number just to make the math pretty straightforward. Let's say you get five grand. Let's say after taxes, it's five grand. Well, let's say you're on a team and you're splitting and that kind of thing. So you're walking with five grand. You know, I think that's a good way to look at that number. So you have a two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollar income opportunity from a database of two hundred and fifty A's and B's. That's pretty substantial. Yeah. I was burning this week. Okay. After the after our meeting on Monday, and I posted on my Instagram and my Facebook and announced yeah. my new job, and I had. You know, you've got to get out there. Yeah. You have to do it. And I posted what I was doing, that I changed my career. Yeah. I had, like, you know, at least the people, you know, yeah. they know. And yeah. I have lots of comments and likes and things on both things. I mean, you know, yeah. now people know. Yeah, that's great. And I've made my first touch. Yeah, that's terrific. So those comments, go back and respond to the comments. I did. Every and that'll single, bump it up. Every yeah. single one I, I responded to and I responded. You respond yeah. Monday, responded Tuesday, responded, you know, and I'm checking to make sure I respond individually to each single person That's on cool. each one to, you know, yeah. love it and respond yeah. to make sure. So we're going to talk very briefly about, okay, so you've got these folks, you want to do what's called an eight by eight. So I want you guys to write yeah, this I down, can... eight by eight and a 36 touch. Have you guys talked about this already? The eight by eight or 36 touch? The meeting the other day, yeah. So they say your database is your business. Um, I will tell you that these numbers on that thing are breaking down a little because the market's a little tougher right now. So what does that mean for you? If the market's a little tougher and I'm saying maybe the referral level is lower, what does that mean for you? You're going to have to work harder, yeah. You're going to have to have a slightly bigger database. So maybe you wouldn't have 250 people Maybe you want to have closer to 350 or 400 people, okay? You want to add as many people to the databases. So having a focus on growing that database and not just sticking with the same 250 people or 200 people. So but your job for the next 48 hours is build and sort that database. I, that You have to do this weekend. Yeah, go ahead. Well, and I, just because I, I don't yeah. this at all. I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm here just as much as a student as you guys, because I don't know what to do right now. But what I would say is the opportunity as a new agent right now is you have the time and the energy to really build the database. I think when I got started and the, you know, the market was as busy as it was, it, it felt like there wasn't much of an emphasis on really dialing in that database. If I could restart, I would have said, do not pass go until I do exactly what Peter's talking about. Get the, dial, get the database in. Do everything you can to get it as good as possible. Right? I could get hit by a bus tomorrow and shut off all marketing, and I'd still get 25 referrals in the next 12 months and probably 12 pieces of repeat business. Okay. So, like, because I've been doing it so long and just have a system in place that for the next two, three, four years, whoever takes over my business from me, they could do no marketing, no calling, and they're still going to be generating but business. You've got to work on it. Exactly. And this is where it all started. Brian Buffini's. So that's what I thought I would touch base with all these people. Perfect. Like, hey, did you mind? Can I get you? Yeah. You know, because I had said, hey, you know, drop me a DM or yeah. a text or email address. Yeah. And then I thought, now I'd give it a week yeah. and touch base with them again and be like, hey, can I get your email address? Yeah. And your, some of them I already have. Yeah. You know, and can I get your address and blah, blah, blah. Would you mind if I sent you out a postcard and stuff and put you on my mailing list? Yeah. And, you know, I've done hair for yeah. 22 years. I know how to talk yeah. to people and contact. Yeah. So I feel totally fine doing that. Yeah. I have no issue whatsoever. Yeah. And and having that connection is so important and being able to build that out. So my question is, how do you do it for 400 people? How do you do it for 1,000 people? How do you do it and not kind of compromise the relationship? You know. So what I typically say is build, sort, and qualify. So you build it out. You've got these people all in one place. You've not qualified them. You, oh, you've sorted them, A, B, or C. 
Uh, of those A's, I want you to figure out who's your top 50 are. Who's my top 50? Like, these are the people that would help me bury a body, you know? Like, who are my top 50? Okay. Those are the people you're going to take to lunch. So my wife and I go on a date every Friday night, and we always take another couple with. Those couples are from my top 50. Is that self-serving? Mm, maybe. But guess what? They're people I like. I like to hang out with them. They're my friends. That's why I take them out. The fact that they happen to also be in my top 50 is just an added bonus. Like well, exactly. You know, so Adam and Lindsay, they moved to St. George. They're still in my top 50. Okay. So when I was down at UAR, guess what I did? I said, hey, guys, let's go out to dinner. I'm down here when you can't make it, but I'd love to see you guys. We got to dinner. Guess what? Adam says to me, you know, my dad, uh, my father-in-law, his mother-in-law passed away two years ago. He's getting ready to get remarried. We're probably going to have to sell that house in Richfield that you sold us five years ago. What do you think I could get for it? Comes up at dinner. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I'll do a market analysis and email it over. Like, let me know when he's ready, you know, if, those, if things pan out or not. Guess what? Sometime in the next 12 to 24 months, I'm going to list a home in Richfield. So what am I going to do? I've got a little system. I'm going to touch base with Adam every month. Something to do with, hey, I just noticed this home around the corner from your dad's home sold. Or, hey, this is what the average price is in the Richfield zip code. Or, you know, do I want to do business in Richfield? Hell no. <laughs> but in this market, I'll do business wherever I can get the deal, right? So, you know, it's going to be a $450,000 home. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you have to know your dialogue or your script before you work on your database? No. no. That, was, that was what I, I wanted to. Don't not have conversations. All, all I was saying is do make an emphasis on getting the database built. Yeah. But for right, you should immediately start having conversations yeah. about those. Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. I would definitely post on social media. Uh, and, and I might not even come in and announce it like that. I think that's fine. I think that's good. I would just post something that's like information because there's two things you're trying to establish. And this is, you know, I love to talk in binaries. You want to establish competence and you want to establish trust. Trust comes from the relationship. Competence comes from like the information, the knowledge. So I want you to see yourself as like, my job is to teach my database about real estate. So maybe you post market statistics once every two weeks. Like, hey, you know, did you know that the average homeowner has this much wealth versus the average renter has this much? Or, you know, anything. Just find some fodder and post it that's local. KW puts stuff out. See what someone else in the brokerage has put out. And I call it research and development or rip off and duplicate R&D. Just find out what another real area is doing that you like and duplicate it. And preferably someone in-house because you don't want to be ripping off some of the brokerages, proprietary stuff. At KW, we tend to be a little more collaborative. So. That's the other thing is that I personally um, don't feel confident at this point because yeah. when I was given on the high five, do you know what to say in a conversation? Let's say... Uh, I don't even know what to refer it to, but a conversation where you're talking to a potential buyer or seller. It's like, I don't even know what the objections would be. Yeah. I, but I want to sound, I not sound, I want to be knowledgeable yeah. about the market. Sure. I want to be intelligent. Yeah. I want to be able to converse with them. Yeah. So I, I would call, I, I believe in baptism by immersion. I believe in real estate by immersion. Okay, so real estate by immersion. You've just got to immerse yourself in this world. And what you'll find is it just comes up. You're like, oh, so you're coming to Ignite. That's a good step. You know, you're going to take classes here at KW and you're going to learn. You're going to come to team meeting on a Tuesday. You're going to watch Gary Keller podcast. Um, did you guys, you guys, did you guys have a 30, 60, 90? Like where there's videos that you watch and things like that. Watch those videos, you know. Um, and what you'll find is all of a sudden you're speaking the lingo and you're more competent than you imagine. The limiting belief is, I don't know. I don't know. The reality is, oh, I'm learning. 
I'm learning, you know, so. And maybe just start with like, five yeah. 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 And ask for help. So if someone, if, if you're having a conversation with someone, they're like, hey, do you know how much my home is worth? You're like, you know what? Actually, I can run a market analysis and get that to you. And then you rush home and you call me or Clay or Hunter and like, how do I do a market analysis? Can you figure this out for me? And then we're like, oh yeah, let's do it together. And, uh, and then you send them a market analysis. So, yeah. So we talked about leads versus contacts. Um, there's a process called nurturing. And that nurturing is, so now you've got these people in your database and you are dripping on them and that dripping on them is for nurturing. So for example, you might add them on social media if you don't already have them or you've posted, that's a, that's a touch, okay? You're sending them a private message asking them for their Christmas card. Then they see another post of yours. So let's say you put together a database of 250 people you might want to do something to connect with them. What are some of those things you could do en masse? You mentioned something, a postcard. You could send them a postcard. What would you put in that postcard? Yeah. There's, there's a lot of options you could do. Yeah. So you could send them a postcard that's got like market stats or that is um, like a newsletter, like a little like mini bullet pointed newsletter. What, pe what are people going to do with that postcard, do you think? They're going to look at it and they're going to throw it away. But does that matter? No. no it's a touch. They see your name, your face. Exactly. What about a monthly email? Did you send out an email? Yep. Yeah. Well, how would you do that? Well, through command. Okay. Um, do they still do the neighborhood? Uh, what are the, is it called a nurture? Yeah. So you can put people who own a home in command on a neighborhood nurture. Um, what did it used to be called? Maybe it's always known. Okay. Basically, every month they're going to get an email about the homes that are actively being marketed in their neighborhood. It looks super professional. It's branded to you. And in order to do that, you need what? An email and address, right? Nice. So, acting on what Peter just talked about, putting in conversations. Yeah. Hey, like a lot of my clients, a lot of my friends are telling me they really like it when I when I let them know what their home is worth. And I can do that every month for you. Like, mm -hmm. would it be would it be worth it to you to know what your home is worth? Yeah. I come from contribution. Um, that you'll hear people say that a thousand times, but it's like, what can you do for them? You know. Um, one of the lead gen strategies that works really effectively is the open house thing. So these are obviously people that have raised their hand. Well, how do you collect their email addresses or their phone numbers? Well, there's a couple of ways. You could have them sign in and fill out a sign-up form. I like to say to them, hey, you know what? I'd love to send you some additional pictures of the house. What's the best number to send those to? I'll just text them to you quickly. And I'll text them like a photo report of the home. Well, guess what I have now? Their phone number. Yeah. Um, another dialogue I love to use at open houses, and this is going down a bunny trail that I want to go down, but I shared this with Daniel. When people come in the open house, I'll be like, hey, thanks for coming. This is a Nordstrom, so I'm not going to follow you around and ask you if you need anything. Um, but if you do, don't hesitate to reach out. And then they're looking through the house, and I'll say to them, you know, we have two kinds of folks that come to these open houses, folks that are actually looking to buy a home right away, and then folks who've got a home to sell before they make a move, what camp do you fall into? Oh, no, no, we're just down the road. Uh, like, uh, we're just kind of looking through. Oh, okay, great. Um, well, what brought you in today? Oh, well, we saw the signs. Okay, that sounds awesome. Well, I'm Peter, by the way, and you are, you just pause. They have to tell you their name. It's not like, hey, what's your name? They have, yeah. If you just say, oh, I'm Peter, and you are, they fill in the blank. Like now you know their name and they know they live down the road. Guess what? You can look them up on County Records and send them a handwritten note. Thanks for coming to my open house, da 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 da, that kind of thing. 
Now, you know, that's someone in your database. Maybe you pop by with a small gift, like some cookies or Girl Scout cookies. Hey, I'm scouting the neighborhood and I knew you because you'd come to my open house. Do you know anyone else who's looking to make a move? Hey, by the way, I've got a client appreciation program and we love to send you monthly information about what's going on in the real estate market. If I was going to send you that, would you prefer to get it in the mail or via email? Oh, no, no, I'd rather get it via email. Okay, great. What's the best email to send that to? Okay. So now you've added their, now you've got their phone number, you've got their email address and their physical address. And you didn't technically ask for anything except for the last item, you know? So, but now they know you a little. And you've had all these touches. Okay. Saw them at the open house. They got the card. You popped by. Now, what's the time frame for that? Okay. You just give them, <clears throat> if they just give you their name and then you, Probably know where they live and they didn't know they didn't know. Oh, you're a realtor. They know you know. I mean, they said I live down the street, you know. So, and people don't like, people aren't uber conscious of that. Like, they're not like, oh, well, how would they know my address? And like, you know, I mean, maybe one in a thousand people is super like, you know, got, yeah, I'm not saying have stalker vibes. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, like you can look up anyone in Utah County if you know their name. Yeah, Genuine. especially if you pop by with a gift, like there's $2 kneader loaves. Oh my gosh, I've made so much business off of $3 kneader loaves. My wife's grandmother's neighborhood, we had her home listed and I just went, she knew everybody because she'd lived there for 45 years. I just went door to door in that neighborhood and I gave away 20 loaves of bread. And I said, oh, grandma's going to assisted living. Want to let you know we're putting the home on the market. Da, 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 da. I'm Peter. I'm her grandson-in-law, technically. But if you know someone who wants to move to the neighborhood, let me know. Oh, yeah, Glenn, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and like, I mean, the 20 loaves of bread, it was like two hours, three hours of work because these people just wouldn't stop chatting. I've gotten four transactions out of those 20 loaves of bread over the last five years. And the reason is, is I stayed in touch with those folks. I added them to my database. Well, I sold that house, grandma's house. The people across the street asked me to come to a CMA. They then called me six months later. I sold them a different home. They turned that one into a rental. A year after that, they sold that house. Then the people who bought grandma's house using a different realtor, I adopted them as orphans. So adopting an orphan is after a closing, you pop by that new homeowner and you say, hey, I was the listing agent. Da, 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 da. I'm just touching base to see that you're getting settled. Um, here's how you work the sprinkler system, whatever. And like, if you ever need anything, don't hesitate to call me. Like, da, da, da. they weren't my client. They were the other agent's client. But after the closing, the agency relationship is terminated. So I call it adopting orphans. My base assumption is their realtor is going to really suck at keeping in touch with their past clients now that their commission check is cashed. I've gotten so many. So the people who bought grandma's house, I literally have it listed right now. And I sold them a house four doors down to one of the other people I got a loaf of bread. Over a five-year period, I've had like four or five transactions out of that 20 loaves of bread. And it's all about adding them to your database and staying in touch with these people. You know, you never know who's going to do the business. You just never know. I was driving back from UAR and I started getting all these phone calls from people. I'm like, why are all my database calling me? Well, my monthly email had gone out two days before and I would not even realized it because it's automated and Josh prepares it and sets it up. Nick Becker's call. I'm like, well, he's like, well, we're doing a kitchen remodel and then we're moving to San Antonio. We need you to come look. I'm like, okay. I'll, I'm like, John Paul Brummer calls me. I'm like, hey, JP, what's up? He's like, well, you know, Grace and I have both graduated and she's now got hired at the hospital. She's a doctor. He's a lawyer, you know. We want to buy something up in kind of the Yale area in Salt Lake and we don't know if we qualify. We both make great money, but we don't have a lot of money down. Put them in touch with my lender. He got them pre-approved, you know, and it's just consistency over time. So here's a little adage. Consistency is the father of destiny, you know? And so what happens is if you guys build this database now and communicate it with it over time, you will reap the benefits. In 24 months, you'll be closing so many deals you won't know what to do with your time. You'll need to hire an assistant. So, when yeah. you're building a database, 
and you're calling people that you haven't talked to in maybe a year, um, or a year, still, how do you keep the conversation? Like mine are two and a half to three hours each. Yeah, that's long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes that first conversation has to be that long, which kind of sucks because you haven't stayed in touch with them. So like, and so don't make it about real estate, make it about reconnecting. Oh, right. Yeah. So just like, Hey, how are you doing? And they're like, Oh, we haven't spoken to you in four years. What's happened? Oh, well this happened and this happened. You know, so keep it brief, maybe hit the highlights, do what you can to keep it brief. Oh, um, right? Yeah. And so I call that my apology script. And I use that so it happens occasionally, not often, often anymore. Before I had an electronic database, I had it all on a spreadsheet. So I'd sell someone a home, I'd add them to my spreadsheet. Sell someone a home, add them to my spreadsheet. Well, two or three years in, I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't talked to those people. They're not on my spreadsheet. David and Jackie Roth. What the heck? So I hadn't spoken to them in two years, even though I'd sold them a home, because somehow they didn't make it on my spreadsheet. So I called them up. I was like, Hey, David and Jackie, this is your long lost realtor, Peter. And I feel awful. I'm so sorry I haven't stayed in better contact. And uh, how are you guys doing? Oh, we're doing great. Da, 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 da. I remember they had a daughter. I was like, remind me of your daughter's name. Is she in the high school? She, oh, no, she just graduated. I was like, oh, that's awesome. I was like, look, I'm just calling to apologize. I try and service my clients at a really high level. And for some reason, I did not uh, stay in touch with you guys. Like, it didn't make it into my contact list and i loved working with you at the time you guys were such fabulous clients um can i add you to my client appreciation program yeah sure absolutely and then i sent them a handwritten note the next week the next day actually so great catching up you know what did you say you said, you said i like to uh, something about keeping a really high level of service, service. yeah yeah I don't know. Like, appreciation. Yeah, I have a client appreciation program. Yeah, so that's always my hook. My hook is I have a client appreciation program. Because like the client appreciation program is kind of a subtle way of saying, I'm going to stay in touch with you. You're going to hear from me again. I like that. Um, um, so I live in Mapleton. I lived in Provo before that, and I grew up in South Africa. Is your accent? Uh, okay, yeah. Here are different types of communication, different ways to stay in touch with folks, phone calls. And this is the thing that gives people anxiety, like, well, I can't talk to them because I haven't spoken to them in a long time. Okay? Just reconnect. Okay? Reconnect. Have the phone call, the hard one, the two-hour one. Because then next week or next month to send and follow it up with a handwritten note. Don't invest the time on the call and then not do the handwritten note. People love handwritten notes. And if you don't have their address, text them and say, hey, I want to send you a little something. I'm so glad we got to reconnect. Where's the best place to send it? And they'll send you their address. You know, And then you send them, and don't include your business card the first time. Just, just a handwritten note. You know, um, And then for them a month later to get something from you, that's real estate related. It's not going to be that weird. You know, they might call you and be like, Oh, did you send I'm like, Oh yeah. My marketing person, you know, put that together and sending it out to everyone. I know, you know, um, and sometimes I'll just ask them, like, I'll make a second phone call, like in month two or three. And I'll say, Hey, um, I, and the, because then you're doing the Ford dialogue, family, occupation, recreation, dreams, how's work, blah, blah, blah. I promised I was going to stay in touch. I really want to make sure I do that. You know, last week, last month, you'd said this. How'd that play out? You know, uh, nice thing. Yeah, it really does. I'm so glad you got my card. Um, and we should get the families together or whatever, you know. Um, and then, um, oh, by the way, like in my business, I have a client appreciation program where we send out useful information and items of value. Would you be offended if I emailed you? Oh, no, not at all. Yeah, would you be offended if? No one's going to say, yeah. Or they might say, oh, you know what? No, I try and keep my email really clean. And then you're like, oh, hey, no problem. Then you don't add them. They'll still see you on social media. I've got a buddy who called me yesterday. Last client, I sold him two homes. 
and um, he reached out to me. He's like, hey, I don't want to intrude, blah, blah, blah. Do you ever help people um, contest their tax valuation? I'm like, yeah, Michael, last year I taught a whole online class on how to do that. He's like, oh my gosh. He's like, he's like, but I really don't want to impose. The deadline is tomorrow. Can you send me a market analysis of my house? Because they're saying it's worth 1.1 million. And I just, man, my taxes went up last year. Now they're going up. And I was like, no problem. I literally made that my number one priority. Graded a market analysis, emailed it over. And he's like, dude, like you're the best. Thank you so much. Guess what? Michael's not on social media. He's never been. So he just isn't on social. His wife is, but he gets my email. He gets my mailers and he gets four phone calls from me a year. So when he had a real estate question, well, here's what gets what came up in our conversation. Oh, da, 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 da. my son's baseball coach is a realtor now. Da, 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 da. And he's actually in my brokerage, it turns out, down in Mapleton. And I was like, oh, that's so funny. I was like, yeah, I totally know him. He just got licensed a few months ago. And it was kind of me taking a jab because I'm like, don't use him, use me, you know, um, because the reality is most people know two or three realtors. You want to be the one that's top of mind. So, yeah. And I, it is so true. Most people know two or three realtors, but they don't know six or seven. Like, yeah. And most people will use the first realtor that comes to mind or the second. So you just have to give yourself as many opportunities to be the first or the second. Yeah. That's, that's so one of the dialogues I'll use is when I'm qualifying my database. So we said build, sort, and qualify. At a certain point, you need to have this conversation. This is the hard one. It's the valuable one, though. This is the money maker. Here's the dialogue. Hey, uh, Scott, we've known each other a long time. I don't know if I've ever articulated this or made this, told you this, but the leading source of business for me is referrals from friends. And I don't think I've ever asked you, but do you have a realtor that you refer people to regularly? If you knew someone was buying a selling home, do you have someone you send them to? Not really. Would, could I be that person? If you come across someone, could you send them my way? Awesome. That sounds great. I really appreciate that. You know, And what I found is good people know good people. And so I know that the people you send over are going to be awesome and i promise you i'll handle them uh treat them like gold you know i'll handle them with good bucks you know so have that conversation now what if they say oh yeah my cousin's a realtor you're like oh that's awesome i wonder if i've done a deal with him what's their name oh their name's aaron russell oh okay i love aaron he does such great work or oh, i've never heard of them that's terrific have them in license oh da, 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 da. like hey I want you to send every referral you come across to them because they're your family. And you, you know, I was like, could you just send me one person a year? I'll be your backup. How does that sound? Oh yeah, no problem. Can I still add them to my database? Guess how many backup people use me as their primary realtor now? A lot. Because the odds of that guy staying in business or him staying in touch or staying top of mind goes way down. So I'm just a backup. But she said so yeah 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 I'm like yeah oh my gosh please send family refer people to him because that's going to be the lifeblood of his business i'm just saying hey once in a while throw me a bone yeah could you just send me one person a year if you've got 50 people that'll send you one person a year yeah that's 50 deals potentially 25 if half of them close so Anyway, so the, the dialogues matter, the scripts matter, and it's, you know, I, I think maybe I make it seem easier than it is, but it's just practice. It's just practice. And all those dialogues are in Ignite. Some of them are in Ignite. I've got another script mm -hmm. book that I can send you. Yeah, in, uh, in the New Age Sources, on the 30th, yeah, it will be a the, the easiest one is really that Ford script, and it's in there for sure. Yeah. But it's because I've been doing it a long time and I practice and practice, practice. And they say don't practice on money. So practice with a friend, practice in the mirror, put it on a, I was nearly said a CD and listen to it in the car. But then I was like, 
1983 called, they want, I mean, 1993 called, they want their CDs back. Does anyone still listen to CDs? I don't know, maybe. I don't even know if my car has a CD player. It's like, I just stream music now. Yeah. Um, text messages face-to-face. -face. Um, in levels of communication, there's a book called Seven Levels of Communication. There's this idea that there's quality communication, both spoken and written, and the quality increases as you go up the pyramid. The highest level of written communication is the handwritten note. And obviously electronic, like email, is a lo lower level communication. Text message would fall in somewhere in there. Um, highest level spoken communication is face-to-face, voice-to-voice, one-on-one. So that's why some of your communication could be pop buys. So I want you to make a list of five people now, right now. Who would I pop by? Who could I stop by their home with a box of cookies or a, some flowers or Starbucks gift card? Who are five people that I could stop by this weekend and just say hi and let them know what I'm doing now? Write down five names. Because the pop by is probably, in my opinion, it's kind of like my trademark. I mean, I didn't come up with it, but it's, a, it's like my swan song. Scott, what is your opinion on pop buys? Okay. Why are they challenging? Uh, that's why I just me. Okay. What do you have to drive down for? You know, the thought you have to have is yeah, the people are down for once or twice a week. You need to be around, you need a referral. Kind of worth it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I love them. It's it's perfect. Yeah. Because usually if you have big things, you don't go to buy some media, you just sit on the front porch and just pay the cost. Yeah. So I'll often say do a pop buy, not a plop buy. So my pop buys, I try and be efficient and keep them like five minutes or less. So they will. They'll say, hey, come in, sit down. They're like, oh man, I so wish I could. Let's make a time for that. But I'm actually on my way to an appointment, meaning another pop yeah. buy. Um, because I don't want to, if I go in and sit down, that's 30 minutes and that's hard. Um, <clears throat> I do them geographically. So I'll hit all my Pleasant Grove people, all my Provo people, all my Santa Quinn people all in one time block. So, and it's a little different because obviously, you know, it's past clients as well, that kind of thing. Um, Christmas is a great time to do Popeyes. Thanksgiving is a great time to do Popeyes. Halloween's a great time to do pop -up. Use the holidays as leverage. Last year we bought, what did we buy? Um, Scott, those pumpkin carving kits. And Scott came into the office and there were some leftovers from last year. So he pilfered them. He's like, Halloween's coming up. I'm going to take these pumpkin carving kits and he's going to do Popeyes with them. Um, in the summer, we had stickers made. You know, you can go to like the Harvard farm stands and get watermelons. We got these stickers made that said, you're one in a melon. And what else did it say? We love your referrals or something, or we're never too busy for your referrals or something on the sticker. Yeah, yeah. Um, your referrals are sweet and juicy or I don't know, something like that. No, it wasn't quite that lame or cringy. Um, we had those stickers made and yep, you can pass them around. Oh, these are for the cookies? Yes, yeah, just pass it around. You want to pass it, you give them back to him when you're done. So with our Popeye gifts, we always put a sticker on them that's kind of a little corny. And you think it's lame, but people remember it. It's a great way to stay top of mind. Um, and so if you have 250 people in your database, how many Popeyes is that in a year? 250 if you're doing once a year. It's 500 if you're doing twice a year. So 500 Popeyes in a year. Okay. That's a lot of Popeyes, right? I, you know, getting into this business and learning about the relationships, building them, makes me think, oh my gosh, I've been a horrible relationship person, except on Valentine's Day, which is my birthday. But I always love to give out Valentine's and cookies to everyone. That's great. So that's yeah. Why I'm, I'm on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I would leverage that and just like you could, what I would do on Valentine's Day, I would do a reverse Popeye. Okay. 
So this is a magic trick. I got tired of doing Popeyes and I found out about something called a reverse Popeye. Oh. So reverse Popeye is where they come to you. So Scott recently did a reverse Popeye. He figured out he could get a super good deal on strawberries, right? Yeah. How much were they a punnet? Nine bucks. Or 16 bucks. Yeah. Actually, no, that was eight. Okay. Like a buck, a buck, a buck ten each. Yeah. yeah. And so he sent out a mass text to his database. Everyone or just some people? Top Your top 50. And said, hey, you know what? I got a sweet deal on strawberries. I'd love to get you some. Uh, you have to just let me know if you're interested. And so then they had to come and get them from him. And so they came to him and picked up the strawberries. That's face-to-face, voice-to-voice. Now we're chatting. And like, hey, you know, it's a client appreciation item. It cost you 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 27 bucks. And you got face-to-face with how many people would you say? Eight people. So for the next month or two, he is top of mind as the realtor gave me strawberries with those people. Oh, yeah. People do the pies. Yeah. At yeah, exactly. You know, you give me a pie, pie for pie. Pies. I ordered a Costco. I'd love to give you, a, you know, a pumpkin pie. Come drop by and pick it up. Yeah, absolutely. We do. Yeah. Let me tell you, a pie's backfired on me once. I ordered 400 pies. Oh. Because we had like that many people respond to our request for pies. Uh-huh. Obviously, I have a team, right? And I've been at this a while, so there's lots of people in my database. Three fourths of the people came and picked up their pies. So, 400 pies, three fourths of the people, 75% of people. How many pies was I left with? 100, 100 pies. I popped by and delivered them. Yeah, 100 pies in two days. Yeah, but people had signed up for them. They'd said, I want a pecan pie or I want an apple pie. And so I did. I drove for two days with pies on the back seat of my car from Santa Quinn up to Bountiful, oh delivering pies geographically. And I was like, oh my gosh, next time I'm going to make sure I send a confirmation in advance of buying the pies. Yeah, I learned. Yeah. But I got so many deals from that pie giveaway. It's just people felt bad. They're like, oh my gosh, I forgot my pie. I'm so sorry. You know, yeah, yeah. It's so, anyway. Um, types of communication. So what that happens is it, it creates kind of like this feedback loop. So you've got 250 people in your database and you um, communicate with them effectively. Maybe you do some pop buys, they get a monthly email, they get a postcard, various things like that. They refer people to you. Now those people are added to your database. So let's say you get 50 referrals in a year. Now you go from a database of 200 people to 250 or 250 to 300. Are all of those referrals gonna do business? Maybe not, but you've got their contact information. You've got their email, their phone number, and there are people you can follow up with, okay? So I think it's important that you are constantly focused on growing your database. Constantly focused on growing your database. Because your database is your business. And if your database isn't growing then, nor is your business. Um, Question. How do you prospect people that um, yeah. How, how do you do that gently without sounding like so? Yeah. So give me an example of someone you just met. Okay. Well, this was just because I was thinking it in my mind yeah. like the other night when uh, Angie had this thing. I was talking to the attorney and being like, thank you. If, you know, yeah. just if I was out and about. I happen to be talking to the attorney who is here. Yeah. And I just wanted to practice making conversation. And I was good for a little bit. And then I was just like, shit, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Yeah. But I thought, what if this was somebody that, I mean, like even the, the air conditioner guy. Yeah. Yeah. What can I do without sounding? So ask questions. Always ask questions. 
I think questions are the most underrated thing. Well, things will always work out for you. Things will always work out for you. You know? <laughs> yeah. Just ask questions like, yeah, where'd you get your shoes? I don't know. That's not a bad question. Like, that's a, it's a question, you know? Um, we have a meme that's done the rounds in our family this week. It says, I think I maybe showed this with you already. Uh, I'm sorry I made it weird. I'm weird. I promise it'll happen again. <laughs> you know? And that's just like, that's just life, you know? Um, the reality is this, that you do need to ask good questions and they're usually open-ended. Like, hey, uh, like how did you get into doing HVAC? Or what made you decide to become an attorney? Or, you know, people love talking about themselves. So yeah, that. that's fine. That's all you need to but do. I, I cannot bring myself into then it. don't. If that feels unnatural, then don't. Just talk about them. And they will walk away thinking, oh my gosh, I never have people pay that close attention to the things I'm saying. That's an interesting person to be around. My wife had a college roommate, Rachel Tovar. And I will never forget this person. Like I sp spent 30 minutes talking to her one day. This is the first time I ever met her. She only asked questions about me, like the whole 30 minutes, like, like, oh, da, 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 like, where are you in your search mission? Where? Oh, yeah. 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 What's Farmington Law? You know, da, da. Like all these, que like one after another, just whatever I said, she turned it into another question. And I left thinking I was the most wonderful human on the planet. And all she did was ask questions the whole time. I learned a huge lesson that day, you know, so I think that's the greatest way to strengthen relationships is ask questions. I find that hard to do with even my, my kids. Like yeah. I have a 19 year old living with me and I have the hardest time talking with him. He doesn't have anything to say. And I have teenagers, I know how it is. So it's yes. normal? Yes. Yeah. So I mean, but so I would ask things like, like what's the highlight of your day? You know, or what's something you're hoping to accomplish? Or like, you know, yeah. 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 That's a four year old thing. It's yeah. Uh, that's yeah. Yeah, that's actually a really reasonable response if you've got a teenager. Okay, will be okay. I promise. Um. Yeah. So I'd say ask lots of open-ended questions. It'll increase the dialogue. I think that's valuable. It's powerful. So, um, when you add new people, how to not make it weird is just be upfront. So when I meet a new buyer, my buyer consultation, this is the dialogue. Hey, uh, Mike, it's so good to meet you. Landon referred you, and I take that very seriously because when people refer me, it's because they trust me. And I hope that fast forward, you receive such a great experience working with me that you wouldn't hesitate to refer me, setting an expectation. My whole business is based on referrals. And let me tell you how that benefits you. Most realtors spend their time door knocking, cold calling, da, da, da. I don't do any of that. All I do is service my clients at a really high level and rely on good people to refer me good people. And I can tell that you're good people because Landon referred you to me. So as we go through this process of helping you find a home, I hope you'll just keep your eyes and ears open. And when you come across someone who's looking to make a move, if you wouldn't mind putting me on a group text with them so I can service them at a high level. So that's before the transaction even, while we're sitting doing our buyer consultation, explain the benefit to them, okay? Um, during the transaction, I look for a win, a touch point. So the most common example I, is like the appraisal comes in 10K over. This happened recently, Spencer. Uh, your appraisal came in. I'm so excited to let you know it's 10,000 bucks over our contract price. I knew we were getting you a good deal. I just didn't realize how good. And so congratulations. Like, do you, you still feel good moving forward? Oh yeah, I totally feel good moving forward. Awesome. Hey, remember when I said I was going to make sure that I took great care of you? This is kind of the thing I was talking about is I really want to make sure that you feel like I've been there every step of the way. Do you feel okay referring folks to me? Like that's a straight up question, right? Oh yeah, no problem. I totally do. Awesome. So you come across someone who's looking to buy or sell a home. I am so grateful that you said you would refer them to me. Uh, the easiest way to do that is just to do a group text. 
you know. So you're having to text conversations like while you're like, hey, your house came in 10,000 over. Mm -hmm. You're having this whole conversation with somebody else. No, no, no. Yeah, oh. it's an in-person conversation like on the phone. And I'm having this conversation with my buyer about in the future giving me referrals because I just had him have a win. But I'm just saying he's yeah. got his friend on the line like texting. No, 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 no. I'm oh, saying okay. I'm saying if you come across someone who needs to make a move, oh, will you put you'll... me? Will you put me on a group okay. text with them? Like, that'd be awesome. So I'm like, teaching them fun. how to give me a referral. Oh, my God, it's yeah. so awesome that he got me. I mean, yeah. that'd be I've had stuff like that happen, but okay. like it's kind of weird. You're like, well, well, you're so genuine. Yeah. And you then really at closing, person. I do the same thing. I'm like, we're here. <laughs> it's closing. You're going to get your keys tomorrow. I'm so excited. This has been an awesome experience. And um, I'm just going to remind you one last time that my business is based on that referral, that initial referral where Landon referred you to me. Um, that is the basis for my business. Are you feel that you feel like I handled you with care and that you would feel comfortable referring folks to me? Because if they didn't, that's good feedback too. Like if I screwed up during the transaction and it's happened, they're like, oh yeah, but you know, da, 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 and they're complaining about something. Like, you know what? I'm so glad you brought that to my attention. What can I do to fix it? Or, hey, I'd like to propose this idea. Like, you know, we all make mistakes, right? This is, we're not perfect. Like, yeah, I know the fridge was supposed to be included and they took it. Da, 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 da. What if I got you a gift card to RC Willie for $2,000? Would that, oh, yeah, dude, that would totally make. I was like, okay, then let's do that. I'm going to make sure that after closing, you get a gift card to RC Willie. And yeah, that was a business expense. I, I learned a lesson. I bought a few fridges in my day. I bought a couple of washers and dryers. You know, I fixed up a couple of fires. You know, but the thing is, guess what? Those people will send you referrals. So, yeah. <laughs> Include a fridge magnet with your contact information. <laughs> so, um, the worst thing you can do is um, just pretend there isn't a problem. So, you know. Uh, some of my best touch points have been fixing a mistake. I'll give you an example. When your assistant accidentally uh, posts the wrong posts the wrong open house date on a listing, okay? So you, can I share this example? Is that okay? So yesterday, <laughs> Josh, I said, hey, post this open house to this listing, da, 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 da. And I wasn't specific enough, and we were in a meeting. And so he did. He posted the open house for the wrong day on the wrong house. Um, he caught his mistake and he fixed it, but somehow Zillow and Redfin picked up the open house on Friday between two and four. So the one you're doing in Provo, it got posted on a different listing. So that client called me last night. He's like, um, on Zillow, it says we're doing an open house at my house tomorrow between two and four. He's like, uh, I was like, no, the MLS says between 11 and one on Saturday. He's like, yeah, but Zillow, I was like, ah, oh. I said, it must have picked up from the feed when it was wrong for just like an hour. He's like, ah, oh. I was like, he's like, well, I guess we might want to just do it. I was like, well, let's see what it says later in the day. Anyway, nine o'clock at night, Redfin and Zillow were still showing that open house. So the thing is, people are going to probably show up today between two and four. So we're turning it into a, a great opportunity. Josh is sitting in the open house between two and four today, and I'm paying for them to go to the movies, you know? And guess what? These guys, Dallas and Dez, it's my sixth transaction with them. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah, because we made a mistake. So I'm saying, hey, take the kids to the movies. They're going to go see Coco at 140, and we're going to do an open house from two to four. So, yeah. Did we actually add that back? Do you, okay, so we went back into the MLS and posted the open house again. We might as well leverage the opportunity. Yeah, and the right property. another open house the next day. Yeah, yeah. It's just funny how that is, you know. So we're turning, you know. Yeah, yeah. But the, the point is, your database is your business. Your database is your priority. Those relationships matter. So you just do whatever you have to. Now, I'm going to say one other thing here. You will end up at some point in your career with a toxic client and they're okay to delete. Okay. They're okay to remove from your database and from your life. So, yeah.
you're thinking of someone. Uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> so, well, it, you get a pretty good sense of someone who's going to be toxic early on because that what you've been able to tell no. before. Sometimes you're good the first couple times you meet with them, and as things progress, you see, oh man, this is going to be. Yeah, so here's the thing I uh, believe in giving people a lot of grace because this is probably the single biggest thing they're ever going to do financially is buy a home. So people sometimes lose their crap halfway through the process because they're under stress. And so you can't judge someone based on a single event or a single situation. I recently had a client blow up the day after closing as my title rep because his check wasn't ready. Well, it hadn't funded and recorded. It had been a delay and we hadn't communicated that very clearly. They haven't sold a home in 30 years. They don't know what the process is. It was just like, we all think it's normal to wait the next day or maybe two days for your money. And I'd say to him, oh yeah, it'll fund and record today or tomorrow and then you'll get your money. I didn't explain to him that, okay, it might be an additional day and you will get your money as soon as they've balanced the closing statements and recorded at the county. And then they'll cut a check and you'll, they'll either mail it to you or you can come pick it up or they'll wire the money to you. I mean, like I didn't give him all the details. <clears throat> he showed up at the title company ready to wring someone's neck because he didn't have his money the day of recording. And it was after three o'clock, so they hadn't wired out anyway. Point is, he just lost his cool. It's all good now. We've made friends. He apologized. He's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't, you know, I, sh I was just stressed out, you know, so they were moving into a condo after having been in their home for 40 years. So that's a big deal. Lead generation never ends. It is best when time blocked and it determines the size of your business. Okay. Those three principles are really, really important. Um, it never ends. You're always lead generating. I want you to think of yourself not as a realtor, but as a lead generator. Okay. That, uh, that aphorism, that uh, affirmation, everything always works out for me. Why does everything always work out for me? I want you to think of that in terms of lead generation. So we've talked a little bit about misunderstandings, some concerns, some fears. Do you feel like some of those have been kind of allayed by what we've talked about today? Do you feel a little overwhelmed by this concept of building and communicating with a database? I think managing it, right? I mean, okay. I think it's much more natural. Maybe the things that we're doing to generate leads will be more time consuming now than they will a month or two mm -hmm. from now. Um, but yeah, no, it definitely seems like it's just detailed that process. Yeah. So I own a single piece of paper little notepad yesterday, two days ago, Josh and I were talking about, hey, how are we doing? Let's review the four models. And I wrote on a piece of paper, like you're supposed to do a 36 touch. So if you've got a database, 36 touches in a year. That sounds like a lot, right? But I wrote down, okay, so they get 12 emails, one a month, 12 postcards. That's 24 right there. We do four events as a team. And they get a call inviting them to the event, a text reminding them of the event, and a thank you card after the event. And I see them face to face at the event. That's 36 touches right there. You know, like, and those do not feel onerous at all. You know, so, um, and then you throw in some pop buys, all of a sudden you're at a 46 touch, you know, so it ends up becoming something that you realize, man, this isn't as hard as we make it seem, you know? The, the mistake I see people make is they never get started. They overcomplicate it because they overanalyze it. They're like, well, I got to do this and I got to do that. Just take action. Build, sort, and qualify your database. Add people to command. Communicate with those people and rank the relationship. You invest your time in the A's, some time in the B's, and over time you'll see some C's move up and they become B's, B's become A's. And some of your A's, I've got a guy who gave me a referral every year for six years. And then I didn't get a referral from him for two years. And guess what I found out? His ex-wife became a realtor. And so he listed his home with her. Does that mean I'm going to burn that bridge? Of course not, because she's going to burn out at some point probably. 
So, but he's not an A anymore. I'm not taking Ray out to like, I'm mo he's moving down the list. He'll be a B now. I still get my mailers and my email. But if I have to choose who my top 50 are, he's not going to be in my top 50 anymore. But for a number of years, he was. <clears throat> I don't fault him, you know. His ex wife is a lovely person. I helped them sell their home when they got divorced, you know. So, um, and they've stayed good friends, you know. So it's interesting, you know. I think that you don't know what's going to change. Um, but that's why you've got to stay in communication with your database and you're constantly, they call it top grading. You know, you're, you're, every year you're assessing who gave me a referral. Okay, they're moving up, you know, and all of a sudden your bees give you referrals, but you've got to show them how. You've got to ask for the referral and show them how. So that's kind of that text dialogue I have. The old way of saying it, I used to say to people, hey, when you come across folks who are looking to buy or sell a home, would you give me a call with their name and number so I can follow up? I used to say it that way. Now I say, would you put me on a group text with them? So just, you know, how technology changes and things change over time. But what you'll, what will happen is if you do this diligently, build the database, sort it, qualify it, and communicate with it, there will be a day where, like I was talking about driving back from UAR convention, your phone starts ringing and it's referral, referral. You're like, why is everyone calling? Oh, my email went out. Or, you know, there's some, they got some kind of touch that you'd forgotten about. And now you're getting all these referrals. So, well, they saw a social media post. How often are you guys posting to social media? I'm starting to do it more. But, uh, three, four times. Okay. So I want to teach a principle. I don't know if it's a KW principle where I learned it. It's the 80-20 principle. You need to post every day. If you can post twice a day, that's even better. I know that sounds like a ton. If you're not a poster, maybe just start with posting every day. Yeah, always have a story. Yeah, stories, stories than anything else. Like always have a story up. It expires in 24 hours. I've got some friends, it's like they're posting a story every other hour. And it literally can just be, look, I'm learning about real estate. I'm in a classroom right now you know, or upping my real estate game, whatever. It can be that simple. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Stories are huge. Um, and, and that's another thing. So I'm like 46. I'm not quite a boomer, although my kids will say to me, hey, boomer, you know, I'm a Gen X, like solid middle of the Gen X. So I'm really good at adopting technology, you know, so I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I've got a business page, I've got a personal page, I know about stories, I have TikTok, I do not post on TikTok, you know, so the reality is pick your poison, but you should be on these two forms of social media and you should be posting every day, you should always have a story, but don't make it all about real estate, 80% of it needs to be about your life, 20% of it needs to be about real estate. But you can't just post about real estate because guess what people do? They snooze you, you know? So post about your cat, post about your kids, post about, post about your teenage son who is like, does anyone else teenage son grunt responses? What do you do? You know, um, that kind of thing. I Go ahead, go. Exactly. Yeah. Um, thanks, Daniel. Um, well, I got home the other night. So my wife works at the prison. She's a therapist. Um, and so I cook dinner like three nights a week, which often means I order pizza three nights a week. I'm just kidding. We've had a discussion about that. So I'm not allowed to do that anymore. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, but we have this huge feud about like, where to get pizza. So I've got six kids and they all have different opinions about where the best pizza. So I posted that on Facebook. I was like, does anyone else? Oh my gosh. What's the best pizza? That is a crazy Facebook post. Like so many comments, so many, oh, Domino's by far. Well, have you tried Little Caesar's Thin Crust? Or no, there's nothing better than what's the two buck, two, no, Costco's good pizza. Two Jack. Two Jack. Everyone's oh, yeah, like two jacks. Sure. I was like, I haven't had two jacks in like 10 years. 
So anyway, it was so interesting. So I like to post questions just from my life, things that come up. I posted that on my just my regular Facebook feed. On my stories, it's usually like an image of something. Like when I was driving back from UAR, I took a photo of like the St. George landscape and put some music to it. I don't even remember the song. It is. Hey, where, where are you? So yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Basically, stories disappear in 24 hours, whereas the feed, it just stays there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Whatever, something fun, yeah. and then post some cool thing about the real estate. Like just, just interact. Yeah. Yeah. The 80 20 principle rule, I think, is definitely a powerful thing. Because if you're only posting about real estate, you become very uh, one dimensional. And that's not who you are, it's what you do. Okay. And so, but all the other things kind of cumulatively kind of paint a picture about what you are. Yeah. 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 I love it. Yeah. So my Kim on my team, who I mentioned, who made like 185 grand last year, we call her the cat lady. I mean, literally every third or fourth post is about her cat, right? She loves her cat, Sawyer. Like she has nanny cams in her house so she can watch Sawyer when she's out and about. Like this cat is like the most... There is no, it's awesome. I mean, Sawyer is, it's like one of, she's got two kids and Sawyer. She doesn't have like her own Instagram page. She might. I don't know. Yeah. It's probably, yeah. They have, they have like yeah. accounts of Instagram. Yeah. yeah. So we, we tease her about it and we shouldn't, but it's fun. Okay. Any ahas from today so far? It's been fantastic. Okay. I really like how conversational people are with it. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's something we've been working on for a while, but um, the, the thing that's interesting to me, you said that it started out as scripts, which to anyone to me sounds like that sounds the opposite, you know, of, of getting what it is thought, like, oh, it's a script, you're just yeah. a script. So to say that memorization, I think you said it was remember, memorize before you personalize. Yeah. I think that works really It's a true principle, yeah. right? It really is. Yeah. And it, it, like, it's in all kinds of areas of life, right? Like there are parenting books where I found quotes and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to memorize that, you know, like, because you have to memorize before you can personalize. So I love your Popeyes. Yeah. Popeyes That's are great. Fantastic. They really are. Yeah. And there's thousands of pop ideas. So categorizing your sphere of influence. I mean, there's lots of ways. If you're struggling to come up with three, 400, 500 people, like, and I'm saying 500 is the goal because 250 is fine, but like I said, if people have an interest rate of 25 or 3%, the desire to move, the average is always every eight years. I think that average is going to get longer. You know, That's the reason I'm saying have a bigger database. You can't be harmed by having a bigger database, right? Um, the only harm is if you just don't do anything with it. But that's why you have to top grade. You have to categorize A, Bs, and Cs and spend your efforts on the As. A's get your time and attention. B's and C's get your stuff. So, and it's hard to know where people land sometimes. So default and make them all A's. And as you communicate with them, but the holidays are going to provide you. Like, let's build out a little one, three, five. How many? How much minutes do I have? What am I supposed to be done? Okay, I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to just. But here's the deal. Write down here. What are we in? September, October, November, December. October, November, December. So write those down. Just write September, October, November, December. What's in October? Halloween. Then there's Thanksgiving. And then there's Christmas. Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Okay. So September, you're building your database. You're adding names, whatever. Then you're going to divide your A's, all your A's, into Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. And so you're going to do something like a pop by, something holiday specific for all of your A's. So a third of them around uh, Halloween, a third of them around Thanksgiving, and a third around Christmas. So, and it can be thematic. You know, you could send them, you could take them a pumpkin as a pop by. 
you know, you could take them a pie. That, I mean, that might break the bank for you if you took 50 pies. That could be quite expensive. Um, you could send them an email in November about the power of gratitude. And then you could write them all a handwritten note. Like as I reflect on the things that matter most to me, I realize that my friendships are super important. And I'm so grateful for you because X, Y, Z. Like those handwritten notes, that's powerful. Gratitude is a powerful influence. How would you feel if someone sent you a card like that? I mean, that would be, how, when was the last time you received a handwritten note? Um, from actually a car salesman that I bought a car from three years ago. He keeps in contact with me. Cool. With the, on my birthday, he sends me a handwritten note. He can you me, what, can, do you know his name? Um, his name is Alfredo. Okay. I can't remember his last name. Do you know name. any other car salespeople? Uh, no, I can't tell you one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> Alfredo, it's working. Congratulations. Yes. Uh -huh. <clears throat> oh, he's phenomenal. And I gave him, like, the best Google review ever. Yeah. Like, literally. So, that's case in point. Google yeah. Review. Yeah. Case in point. So, and then in December, it's all about Christmas, right? Or, mm -hmm. you know. So, only your A's get the... Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Or I mean, you could do an email to everybody. You could do like a thematic email to your entire database for um, October, November, and December. Like, like, I'll give you a simple example. I don't want to spend a time creating product here, but you could say, the, don't be scared by the real estate market. You know? Uh, and, you know, you could... You could do some things about some facts about not being scared by the real estate market. You know, I've got your back or Ghostbusters or I don't know. You could do something like that. Um, in Thanksgiving time, it might be an email that's gratitude themed or something like that. Like, um, I'm so grateful to have a warm home, warm food and great friends. Uh, something like that. And you're just talking a little bit about the power of home ownership to build wealth and to kind of create stability and how grateful you are to have that or blah, blah, blah. And at Christmas time, it's like, you know, whatever. I love Christmas because the stars twinkle and Jesus is in his danger and, you know, whatever, like make it Christmas themed or, you know, I love the power of gift giving, you know, um, those kinds of things. So yeah, be yourselves. Build a brand that's based on who you really are, um, but leverage the opportunity to use the holidays to build um, for the coming year. And you will get some business in the fall and winter by doing these activities. Um, use the holiday postcard DM. Okay, uh, I don't have your address, which kind of stinks because I'm planning on sending out a Christmas card. Where should I send it? You know? Like if you don't have someone's mailing address, that's a great way to get their mailing address. So, okay. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Categorizing. Hey. I'm letting you know that now, realtor, or I'm supposed to plug that in. Um, I uh, I wouldn't do that. On my first contact with someone I haven't spoken to in a little while. To, yeah, so if you've spoken yeah. to them recently, like, yeah. So I would post on Facebook or, or Instagram like something about real estate, but almost come to it tangentially and just say, hey, like post a picture of this room and just say, hey, this has been my classroom for the last few weeks. Real estate is kicking my ass. I don't know, whatever. Like, or I'm loving learning about real estate. Mine was you like know? changed, started out with I changed a career yeah after 22 years it started out all like that and went and look how exciting or, no, no, it is or, I get or to do yeah or totally new. or a that's how mine photo of yourself in front of the kw sign redhead realtor i'm straight fire you know something like that like do something that's like bold i don't know yeah mine wasn't just like hey it's i made sure i didn't look like yeah it's yeah so you, I mean, like you could, it, you could kind of come to it from the side. You could just provide information. You're like, oh my gosh, did you know that the days on market for real estate has gone from 21 to 45 over the last two months? 
that's kind of crazy. It's definitely, there's some opportunity out there. Nothing else said. Not I'm a realtor, blah, blah, just a real estate factoid. And they're going to be like, oh, that's interesting that she's posting real estate facts. Oh, it says in her bio, she's a realtor. I never knew that about her. So, yeah. Well, this has been invaluable. Really. You're welcome. So this is a bold law from bold. Change the way you look at things and the things you look at change. Perspective is everything. It really is. Um, yeah. So join groups. Um, find out what you're passionate about and join groups. Like this uh, real estate is a contact sport. You have to make contacts. And so if you tend to be slightly more introverted, slightly more reclusive, you're going to have to shake that off just a little bit. Even if it feels unnatural, um, you're going to have to join some groups. And I don't care what they are. It can be a church or a synagogue. It can be about your hobby. I've got an agent on my team who loves embroidery. And he, I said, start doing micro events around embroidery. Go down to the quilt wagon and meet some folks down there. You know, whatever it is, join groups. Uh, Josh is into, what's that stuff called where you throw a disc? What's it called? Disc golf. <laughs> he, he plays disc golf. And frisbee golf, is that what you call it? Disc golf? Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. And Scott loves pickleball. So Scott did a pickleball, what would you call a tournament? Yeah, a sponsored pickleball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, part of our budget as a team is micro events. So instead of doing a big event for your whole database, you do a micro event where you give away a prize or something like that, and it's a pickleball tournament. Well, guess what? You get to know people have to register. To play and so guess what you've collected their contact it's sponsored by the peter Morkel real estate group scott heaton realtor whatever and they register and they get a thank you they get a prize you get in conversation with folks now you're expanding your soi strengthening your relationships and you tell people i don't want to sound like a salesperson yeah i don't want to sound like i'm well, I'm a realtor. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So in that situation, Scott, how, how is real estate coming up? Is it coming up at all at the front end? Probably not. At the rooms? Yeah. Yeah. Because I am totally open. I yeah. say, hey, I'm a realtor. And this is why I'm doing this. I want to get to know you. I would like to hear my life your business. Yeah. And we get to know each other. And so we're down the hall. We have a conversation. And yeah. I just talk now with your phone. And then I just go into the rules, and here's what here's what the trailer looks like, and here's what oh don't forget you stop by and talk to our sponsor. There's one who's providing all the money, so you have great prizes. And who are so, the sponsors? Uh, Lender. No. Uh -oh. Sponsors are all plug in like it. Okay. So massage therapist, they have a spot out there. Property guy. There's a bunch of random people yeah. that are in the neighborhood out there in that area. They just want they want to do the same thing. They yeah. want more business, and so. We just introduce them. And then at the end, I remind them, hey, don't forget, I'm your local realtor. Love to chat if you have any questions. Well, also, we would love to see you. Yeah, I just, it's off the cuff, but it's just, it's just natural. Most of them know me by now. There's a handful of them. Yeah. But I've had last time I came, I had two people come up and say, I have to be a realtor. Because when I go and play pickleball, I don't talk about, hey, I'm a realtor, right? They're yeah. Like, oh, yeah, no idea about it. So they get yeah. married, we get married with each other. Yeah. So now he's got a lead that is now a nurture. It's someone he can now stay in touch with. They're not just a contact. There's someone he can nurture. Like, oh, how'd, how'd the marriage go? Oh, it didn't work out. I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, was it because you signed up? Yeah, that's why we signed up. They have to say we have, have to sign up. Because so I put together these groups, these teams, right? So I have to have everybody's information so I can organizing groups and teams. So I have their own. Hey, how we doing? And that's the reason that they're getting money. Yeah. 
that will get everything. Like if we hold an event, every team will get name, phone number, email, and So final thing today, this is what you're going to do. This is going to be working with your database right now, today. You're going to go on Facebook and you're going to see whose birthday it is. So I want you to look up whose Facebook birthday it is today that's on your Facebook. And you're not going to post on their Facebook page. You're going to call them and wish them happy birthday. Or text them if you don't want to call. Josh, how do you find Facebook birthdays? I think. Holy cow. I've got 10 birthdays today on my Facebook. <clears throat> hey, um, nope. I well, first of all, I don't have internet for this one here. Do you, does anybody know what the password is? We're texting him today, right? You don't have the Wi Fi password. Oh, she just said it's all. Oh, I don't have that. Don't they have it on your Facebook? Well, then text them. I'm like, no, I don't have Then send them a private message. Um, Will do. Yeah, I, I have no service down here. But where would the birthdays be? Can you give me a profile? Yeah. So just go to two ones. Um, yeah, I have no service. Yeah, but you want to get the right pilot. So birthdays. Oh. You can, um, you're gonna be a minute since you have ten. You're gonna take your yeah. Um, I usually call them, but some of these people are like extended family. And I know if I call them now, I'm going to be here for a while. So like my father-in-law's birthday is today. And so I'll call them. So I do some of my calling. Like, you know, we said two hours of prospecting a day, time block it, do it in the morning. I do mine in the evening. I go for a drive. So if I leave the office at 3 or 3.30, I don't actually go home. <laughs> I'll drive and make my calls from the car because people are home in the afternoon or the evening. They're often not available to talk between nine and 11 in the morning. No, <laughs> Always leave a voicemail. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks guys. Uh, goodbye to the friends on Facebook. I mean, on zoom. <laughs>